Hello everyone and welcome to this video tutorial on how to apply the law on Rylands and Fletcher to a scenario. In this tutorial we're going to be looking at a mini scenario involving Gareth here um, and we're going to look at what the issues are in the scenario and how we identify those and then how we use the idea structure to get a nice answer to the question. Let's start by reading through the situation that we have then. So Gareth stores a significant quantity of fireworks in his garden shed. One night, Harry and Jamie sneak into Gareth's shed, which has been left unlocked, and Jamie throws a lighted match into a box of fireworks. The box explodes, setting fire to the shed and causing serious burns to Harry. Thick smoke drifts onto the nearby main road, causing a car crash. A firework shoots out of the shed and sets fire to Issy's house next door. And you're being asked to discuss Gareth's liability in Rylands and Fletcher. And this particular question is quite nice because it's actually telling you which tort it wants you to apply here. Remember that the question might be vaguer than that. It might just say discuss Gareth's liability in tort. And then you would have had to work out just from reading the scenario, which tort would need to be applied here. And hopefully you'd have been able to do that because remember that Rylands and Fletcher is all about a one-off escape from land. And when you look at what's happened here, um, we've got smoke drifting onto a road. So there seems to be an escape there and a firework shoots out to um, a house next door. So um, we've got escapes happening, Rylands and Fletcher. Now, before we look in detail at what's happened here and start highlighting it as we would in the exam, it's useful just to remind ourselves of what the requirements for Rylands and Fletcher are. Very quick recap then. Remember, Rylands and Fletcher is an ancient tort and it comes from the case of the same name. And it's a very special form of nuisance that relates to an isolated, meaning a one-off escape from land. And it's strict liability, so we don't require any fault on the part of the defendant. And that might be something that struck you when you were reading the Gareth scenario, that it doesn't really seem to be Gareth's fault that things have escaped from his land. Um, but he could potentially be liable because it's strict liability. In order to prove a case of Rylands, we need to meet these four requirements. So firstly, we have to show that something was collected and kept on the land that wasn't naturally occurring. And our cases are Giles and Miles there. It's a non-natural, meaning an extraordinary use of the land. Records, Cambridge, Transco quite important because that tells us that you can only claim for property damage. You can't claim for personal injury under Rylands and Fletcher. The thing that's collected on the land that's non-natural must be likely to do mischief if it escapes. And we must also show that it did in fact escape from the land and it caused damage. And remember, when we're showing that it caused damage, that damage must not be too remote, i.e. it must be reasonably foreseeable. There are also an awful lot of defences for Rylands and Fletcher, and that's one of the big criticisms of the tort, if you remember. Um, so defences such as act of God, act of a stranger, contributory negligence, statutory authority, consent being key ones there. Um, little tip for you, act of a stranger tends to be the one that crops up a lot in scenarios. The others, not so much really. OK, so the more scenarios you look at, the better, because you start to see the same patterns in the different scenarios. You know what it is you need to be looking out for. So now we've got in mind our requirements that we're looking for, let's go back to the Gareth scenario and highlight it just as we would in the exam. But in the exam, we go line by line and highlight anything that stands out as being relevant, given all the requirements that we've got fresh in our mind on Rylands. So it's telling us that Gareth stores a significant quantity of fireworks in his shed. So I'm going to highlight fireworks here because this is what he's collecting on his land. 
And fireworks, you would have to say, are non-natural. They're an extraordinary use of the land. So that's coming into my mind here when I'm reading fireworks. I've just highlighted in the next sentence here, one night Harry and Jamie sneak into Gareth's shed. Now, why is that relevant? Have a think for a second. We've got people sneaking into his property. That's telling us that we've got act of a stranger. OK, third parties are coming onto the land doing this. So that's putting that defence in my mind already. So they've snuck into Gareth's shed, which has been left unlocked. Jamie's thrown a lighted match into a box of fireworks. The box explodes, setting fire to the shed and causing serious burns to Harry. So I'm going to highlight this. We've got serious burns to Harry here. Now, hopefully, Transco is coming to your mind now that although Harry's being injured, um, you can't claim for personal injury, and that's a burn, so that's personal injury. Um, so he's not going to be able to claim for that. I'm also thinking when it's setting fire to the shed, that's making me think of the case of Reed and Lyons. This whole scenario actually makes me think of Reed and Lyons. And sometimes the examiners will do that. They'll make a situation look a bit like a case because they're trying to give you a clue as to maybe what you could talk about. So in Reed and Lyons, there was an explosion in a munitions factory. But if you remember, nothing escaped. The explosion was in the factory and it was contained in the factory. And because there was no escape, it wasn't Ryland's. So at this point, I'm thinking, well, it's not Ryland's anyway, because, OK, it's set fire to the shed, but it's not escaped yet. And also these serious burns we can't claim for anyway. Um, and also act of a stranger in any case. And you could certainly say contributory, uh, sorry, contributory negligence on the part of Harry for taking part in this anyway. But nonetheless, we carry on. So there's been this fire that's making me think of Reed and Lyons. We've got burns to Harry. And then what happens is thick smoke drifts onto the nearby main road. Now, this is relevant because we've now got, as a result of this fire, smoke is going onto a road. So we do have an escape at this point. Now, what is the result of that? Unfortunately, it causes a car crash, so I'm going to highlight that as well. And when I'm reading that, I'm thinking, is that reasonably foreseeable? Is it reasonably foreseeable that if fireworks go off in his shed, there's a car crash? So I'm thinking of cases on reasonably foreseeable, Cambridge Water here. And it might be helpful in the exam to jot down any cases by the side that you're thinking of. So jot down reading lines, jot down Cambridge water. And then we continue. A firework shoots out of the shed. So again, that phrase is telling you there's an escape from one land onto another. And it sets fire to Issy's house next door. Now it's shooting out of the shed and setting down, setting off a house next door sorry and um, that does look reasonably foreseeable to me if a shed's on fire it's reasonably foreseeable the house next door might go on fire so that looks uh, more foreseeable to me um, but of course we've got this big issue here that they're act of a stranger so that's very similar to the case of Rickards and Lothian where it was act of a stranger who'd clogged up basins in a bathroom OK, so the cases often will tell you the answer. And the answer here that we've just sort of talked through is that you can't really claim for the burns in the shed. There's no escape. You can't claim for personal injury. And it's his own stupid fault, contributory negligence anyway. Um, the smoke and the firework going next door. Yes, we've got the escape. This may be not foreseeable. This probably is. But in any event, we've got a defence of act of a stranger. So just by highlighting it, I've now got the answer that I want to write out in my head. We've thought about the application. And now we just need to concentrate on how to write that into a lovely answer that's going to get us maximum AO1 and maximum AO2 marks. And as always, 
we're going to be using the idea structure. So in this one, I would identify that Gareth, he's our defendant, even though he's not really at fault. Gareth might be liable under the rule in Rylands and Fletcher for the escape. And it'd be better here, really, in our case to say when the firework escapes, when the smoke escapes. Point out to the examiner what the escape actually is. It's also useful to point out it's strict liability. So we don't need any negligent conduct on behalf of Gareth for him to be liable. We're then going to D, define Rylands using the four requirements. So just list the four requirements here. And then we E, explain the elements of Rylands and the defences. So go through the different requirements, explaining them all with your cases, um, explain your defences with your cases, and then apply each element to the scenario. Now, what I should say here is this is standard idea where we've got a big chunky E and then a big chunky A at the end. If you prefer, you could use the EA structure on this. So you could explain this, apply it straight back, explain this, apply it straight back. If you're fine doing that, if you're comfortable, that's great. But I happen to find that for Rylands, personally, I find it easier to explain it all and then apply it all particularly for a scenario like the Gareth one that we're looking at, when there's a lot going on, I find it easier to do the application at the end. And I'll show you that on my next slide. So on this slide, I've got a bullet point answer to the Gareth scenario. You may want to pause the video here so you can have a close look at it. Ignore the little ones. That's a rough mark scheme for if we were using it in class. Um, and you can see here, I've started off by identifying Gareth might be liable. I've defined my four requirements. I've explained all of the requirements and the defences using the cases. Mine's bullet points. Yours is going to be beautiful full sentences. And it's useful for these cases to just outline what happened. So saying things like, firstly, it must be collected on the land. For example, in the case of Giles and Walker, it wasn't collected on the land because thistles were naturally occurring. By outlining what happened in the case, you are showing that you fully understand the requirement. And because for Rylands, there are only four requirements, there isn't that much to it. You do have um, more time, I suppose, to give a little bit more detail about your cases than you would in, say, a criminal non-fatal offences scenario where you've got so much to do. Um, so talk a little bit about the cases and then we get on to our application. And I've highlighted in purple the key issues that were in the scenario that we've talked about. And you'll notice that I deal with them in the order that they occur in the scenario. And that's what I advise you to do. So talking about the fireworks, the burns to Harry, the smoke, and then the fire to Issy's house. So you can see Gareth collected fireworks. They are not naturally found there, so they meet requirement one, Giles and Walker. Fireworks are non-natural, like the chemicals in Cambridge water. And that's another tip. You can say this is a bit like in the case of Cambridge water. And you can say it's called reasoning by analogy. So I, if I were to say chemicals were non-natural in Cambridge water, therefore it seems likely that fireworks are non-natural. Sometimes you feel you're pointing out the obvious. I've said that fireworks are explosive, which means they are likely to do mischief if they escape. So therefore they meet that requirement, Hale and Jennings. Sorry, Hale and Jennings. Then I've talked about the first thing that's happened. So Harry was burned. And at this point, there was no escape from the shed because he was burned in the shed, Reed and Lyons. And as we've said, he's burnt and you can't claim for personal injury anyway in Rylands, Transcap. Then move on to the smoke. It doesn't matter that it was smoke that escaped and not the firework itself using miles. It might not be reasonably foreseeable. Talk about the fire to Issy's house. I've just been brief for the purpose of the slide. You explain how it meets all of the requirements, and it does in that instance. But the defence for Gareth is act of a stranger, Rickards and Lothian. So therefore, um, Gareth is not going to be liable under Rylands um, for the smoke escaping and for the fire.
So I hope that was helpful to you on Rylands.